life of geometry into how our cities are growing. Cities are the greatest design challenge of our time, which also means that it's our greatest design opportunity. Welcome to the future of living cities. Today, I propose a shift, a shift towards life, a shift towards incorporating life geometry into how our cities are growing. By 2050, another 2.6 billion people are going to live in cities. Skyscrapers, high rises, mid rises, low rises and private homes. We basically stamp those into a rigid grid of subdivision. Nature does not build like that. We simply cannot continue to copy paste places like this. We have to rethink the way we divide land. When we actually organize according to life's geometry, the benefits start stacking. Mobility, water, energy, culture, and finance begin to work together. Do we want to be remembered as a generation that plundered our planet? Or do we aspire to be the warriors of Mother Earth? Those who paused, shifted perspective, and champions the vital connection between humanity and nature. I'm so pleased to give you my overview and endorsement of the life standard. Why do we need a life standard? Well, we've got about 9 billion people be living on the planet within 50 years. Now, 80, 90% of those folks are going to be living in cities. Our coalition is simple. Site plus standard plus science plus capital. We convene governments, developers, utilities, universities, and communities under the life standards. Geometric bioplanning, taking a circular collective connective approach lets us explore innovative transactions, lets us explore incentive-based revenue models and integrated solutions, finding the benefits and the savings across this. Why integrated ecosystems? Cellular clusters, shortens networks, improves connectivity, improves transactions with others, cuts roads, cuts transmission, cuts broadband, cuts waste, cuts energy consumption. Most importantly, it cuts and saves time. At AECOM, we're driven by working to deliver a better world. And we can only do that when we can actually measure performance. We are thrilled to be collaborating with Drawer and Live to actually measure the potential that bioplanning and ecological cities have to deliver green blue corridors that can manage floods and climate risks more effectively, that can create more shade and improve air flows and manage outdoor heat stress, that can improve travel times, that can use mixed-use densities 
to create more livable and adaptable cities. We act for the benefit of life with humility, transparency and courage. Legacy is not a statue, it's a standard that endures. It is a way of building that our children will thank us for. We have a geometry that belongs to nature, a method that can be verified, and a coalition that can scale. So I invite governments and institutions to join us in making life a shared language for cities. Today, Super Nature Labs offers a new geometry that is cellular, adaptive, rooted in culture and ecology. The life standard makes it actionable with compliance tools and measurable impact that financing and investors can trust. We believe nature is not a cost center. It is the world's most valuable asset. Yet the services that sustain life like oxygen, biodiversity, clean water, soil organic matter, biomass, and other primary ecosystem services, that can be easily adopted into the balance sheets. And that is what remains invisible, is rarely protected. To honor that truth, capital must evolve from extraction to stewardship, and data must be treated as sovereign infrastructure. We're showing what that looks like with real-world natural assets that turn forests and reefs into national strength rather than cost centers. Sovereign data systems that return ownership to governments and communities for growth. And now with the life standard, we're setting a new baseline a way to measure value, not just in GDP or returns, but in the health of our planet and our people. What matters is aligning capital with life itself. I want to live in a living city, an ecological marvel, a place where I can bring up my kids. Consider we could design cities now with the highest order of biomimicry, studying mammalian logic, cellular logic, understanding how all those organ systems work together to create an environment that optimizes for freedom, for harmony, even for social empathy. And in Hawaii, we say not our name, but who we are. Who am I? Who are you? I ask you that question. And the answer is, hey, Hawaii-o. Hey, hawaii -o means I am Hawaii. It means I am connected to her because I am of her. I can't own something that I am from. I can't own something I belong to. What I can own is the stewardship responsibility for caring for it. Our planet is just one island in this vast sea of space. She is fragile. Like Koho'olawe, she is asking, what am I to do with all of these wounds? And together, we answer, we love you. We restore you. We will never leave you alone. We will never forget you. We will always love you. It is that love that has brought us here. Yeah, that aloha which we have journeyed for. And in this oneness of this day of peace, celebrating the life we have on this precious earth, our island planet, if not now, when? If not us, who? If not for love, why? Thank you for being here, and uh, we're looking forward to everything we're going to do together. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>